What went down at Men's Fashion Week? Hey guys, Henry here. Welcome back to another video. The regulars will see the new mic here. Quality's going up. Today, of course, we're going to be discussing what's been going down at Men's Fashion Week. It's actually been a really, really fun fashion week. I always find that spring summer is a lot better and there's a lot to go over and a lot to digest from all the shows. So I thought we'd begin with Milan Fashion Week. This is a lot shorter, you know, with PT and then Milan in itself but there were some really exciting shows that were on there. Naturally, a good starting point is Prada. I think this Prada show was really, really fun and really interesting. There was a lot of cool colors in it, a lot of cool silhouettes and trims, and I really liked the communication with the press notes of what they were aiming for with this collection. I think some people have said that Rafa Mucha have almost phased out a bit with Prada, that it's been a bit relaxed, a bit, you know, same old, and Miu Miu's been the thing that's really been driving Prada Group as a whole, but I think this collection really shows they've still got it. So the press notes stated that the collection was all about imaginary and the imagination and exploring that. There's an element of exploration as mentioned in the collection and for me this was embodied by the different proportions of the looks. You've had some really teeny tight tops, some more oversized flamboyant pieces and for me it really seek to imitate that of a child stealing clothes off their parents. You know, you'd have normally your dad's clothes fitting you too big. You might put on your mum's stuff and it fit too small. And that really had that childlike playfulness in the collection. And I found that the use of the colours were really refreshing as well. There was really nice colour pops throughout the looks. And I really liked them in particular with the knit sort of long sleeve polo esque or the long sleeve knitwear that imitated sort of having a collar weaved into the fabric itself that was really cool i also love the double belt loop detail and upon further look it's actually imitating that of a belt being on the pant where it's actually incorporated into the trouser so it plays on that imitation game and exploring some unconventional styles and unconventional details but yeah all in all the collections are a lot more refreshing and interesting than recent prada collections and it's what i want to see from prada i want there to be elegance there communicating luxury and communicating a very high-end luxury house however having those fun and unique pieces that allow somebody that i guess has the money to afford prada to do something a bit outside the box i always found that prada was that it was a label where it was refined and practical but then had elements of it that really allowed you to explore the unexplored once again if you're new around here make sure you drop a like subscribe and comment down below what was your favorite show and what you were most intrigued by i'd love to hear you guys thoughts on it all another one from pt slash milan is one of my favorite designs at the minute martine rose She's a real champion, I guess, for British design and British fashion right now. She's doing amazing stuff with her own label. And this Milan show really was a step up for Martine. She's really looking to take the brand to the next level. She said in an interview prior to it, this is almost like a second homecoming. She obviously had a more friends and family s small showcase in London previous season. And this was really about amping it up, making the show bigger and better. Also allowing buyers to easily attend to be able to buy the product so she's definitely looking to i guess move on to the next stage of her brand take it up a level and essentially scale it i think the collection itself was bold and really championed that unique martin rose look that we all love and there was new takes on those standard martin styles such as the square toe loafer now with a chunky platform sole and of course, we had the shrunken aspect, the shrunken tea or shrunken product running through the collection. And this is a style which I really, really love. But I also find that Martine wasn't just sitting back and doing things she's already done. She was experimenting and trying out new products and trying out new techniques as well. Mixing in the likes of Trompe Loire, which has been ever popular and ever present in both trend research and catwalks and i did find there was a bigger focus on the likes of leather goods and bags and these are always going to be the thing that really drives sales with usually a lower barrier to entry we also caught glimpses of another nike collaboration i think it's a mix of a nike tempo with an air max tn or air max plus so i really like it i probably will look to grab a pair but i don't think it's quite at that level of the shocks which they've worked on previously and i am so annoyed that i never got a pair of 
Another really important point I found in the collection overall is the use of the, the wigs and the prosthetic noses. It almost was about flipping beauty standards and understanding that that's not the be all and end all maybe. I'd be intrigued to see what you guys think on that level of, of makeup etc that was incorporated in the collection. I don't know if I've read that right or maybe my take is really really far fetched. But to summarise I really think this collection shows how strong Martine is in terms of knowing her design language and knowing where she wants to take the brand and understanding the levels she needs to move towards to scale it up and be selling it better I guess. This current climate is really trying to drive sales and drive revenue so she's taking it upon herself to really ensure that she keeps the brand secure and safe but I'm definitely ready for the brand to become bigger and better than ever before. I can't wait to see the trajectory that she moves on. The next one to really talk about is the show that seems to always open Paris Fashion Week and signal the start of Paris Fashion Week and that's Louis Vuitton. So I believe this is now Pharrell's third show with Louis Vuitton with him at the, the creative director role and the primary message before the show was Le Monde à Vous. I thought initially this was going to really play into, I guess, French cinema and the aspect of La Haine, which is one of my favourite films. There's a famous sort of motto print in that, which is Le Monde à Nous, and it runs as a theme throughout the film. And the venue itself was UNESCO HQ in Paris, which is a literal globe. So that whole aspect of Le Monde, the world, the globe is very ever present for this collection. And I think the collection as a whole looked to take us on a trip around the world and I guess how Louis Vuitton wants their customer to be experienced in the brand and understanding the different levels to it and I think this plays into the whole luggage aspect of Louis Vuitton and how crucial that is to the success of the label. So it was clear that the collection took us on a journey and I think there was that progression through it with the different looks catering to different levels of casual wear and I guess more formal clothes. It started out with a lot more darker tones, more refined and then lifted as we travelled through the collection to have more vibrant colours incorporated into the looks. There was a lot of matte prints within the collection too, so really playing onto that world aspect as well. And they also found that some of the matching sets appeared to mimic that of old school cabin crews. And there was one look which I'll put up, which literally made me scream out that this deserved to be on Top Gun. And of course, the accessories and luggage were next level in this. I think that's how Louis Vuitton will be positioning for forever now, it seems. And it's what they're known for. I love the crumb crumpled aspect of some of the bags, whether they are just lacking reinforcement or pre-crumpled and reinforced to, to mimic that of a battered and bruised bag. I think the main things we have to take from Louis Vuitton is there's no point ever looking at it as being the most creative, groundbreaking brand anymore. It's more about them putting their stamp on things that have already been done. There's never going to be something I find with Pharrell at the helm of Louis Vuitton that's going to make us question what fashion is or ask any key questions about where fashion's heading and I think that's okay. I think there's a running theme also of Pharrell's personal wardrobe almost mimicking or making its way onto the Louis Vuitton catwalk and I think that the Louis Vuitton fan base and the guy who wants to buy Louis Vuitton will feel a lot of connection and deep value in Pharrell and his wardrobe and how he dresses, so naturally it makes a lot of sense. Next is another one of my favorite smaller designers with Bianca Saunders. I touched on her collection last season, how much I enjoyed it, and SS25 is no different to that. The collection as a whole continue to play with metallics and bold colors, which is something that I love from her design language. And it also showed new updates to some of her signature styles with the asymmetric collar detail in, running across onto vests and some other pieces. I think that's another thing I found in SS25 and the recent shows that these brands who do have that instantly recognizable design signature or design detail are really playing into that and championing it and I think it's really smart to do that because it allows you to market it in that way and you can see how JW Anderson has played into this whether being with Loewe or his own brand and a prime example of this is their unique bags with the pigeon bag. It's also fun to see in SS25 a lot of the tops are getting tighter and shorts getting shorter so we need to make sure we're not skipping leg day anymore guys unfortunately if we do we're going to be at a detriment and I also feel like Bianca stayed true to her strong denim offering which she's always had the cowboy western s look with the denim two-piece was great 
big fan of this. And I was a really big fan of how she accessorized some of the looks, such as this one with the tight waistband detailing. Pairing that up with the loose fitting vest and trousers just created a really nice silhouette. And I guess the look overall was just really, really impressive. And even the tailored look showed a lot of strengths and showed her true capabilities as a designer, which is great to see. And it was another brand that really was focusing on boots being a core part of the collection. So I find that boots do seem to be having a bit of a moment at the minute, whether it being within Fall, Winter or SS. Naturally, it's good to see a designer really playing into this and doing it well. But I think it's another super strong collection from her and I'm excited to see it in person as well as hopefully seeing how well it sells. Next up, I guess we'll talk about a far more practical, simple, but beautiful brand in La Mer and their latest collection. I think when Quiet Luxury calls, La Mer just comes running. It is one of these labels where if I had to pick a brand to have a wardrobe from for the rest of my life, no matter my age, it probably would be La Mer. Practicality was key in the collection as it always is. I think the sling jacket Jackets really show this. They've not just designed them to be worn, it's about how you can effectively carry them and still show off your fashion and show off your style within that. And I think they're always a brand which I look to for outfit inspiration overall. It's like that true Pinterest mood board brand that you can just go and be so visually pleased by what you see. Everything is styled effectively, every detail is perfect, and all the color palettes they use are so subtle but really effective. The simple layering is always nice and it always makes Makes sense it's never over the top it just seems like everything is meticulously planned out and is great to see how much detail they go into with every single look it's funny as well because the brand did seem to be a little bit daring this time with the look that i'll show here that's a bit out of the box for La Mer, which seems strange because it's really not that daring. And I also find the accessories were slightly unorthodox for the label, which is nice to see them exploring slightly different styles and slightly different techniques and products to really add more depth to their collections. And I think one of the things that people always would complain about La Mer or with Quiet Luxury as a whole is that they can come across as boring. So I think by them showing that they're open to doing new things and doing more adventurous things given their design language, it's showing that they aren't just a one trick pony, so to speak. So it's another collection from them, which I really, really enjoyed. And I'm hoping that we can see further trajectory for La Mer really conquering fashion as a whole. Almost a contrast then, we should now discuss Izzy Miyake and their latest collection, which is flamboyance, colour, prints galore. The SS25 collection really just opened that door to the Izzy Miyake Wonderland once again. With their signature pleated technique, they incorporated a lot of plaids and prints, which I always think looks so good on this style. And I also found the adopted slight design variations. I love the split sleeve detailing they had running through the collection. This is another style which I'd sort of looked into on Pinterest a bit and seen people having some product like this from the likes of I think Prada and Gucci from previous years. I think it's a nice refreshing design detail that just adds a bit more depth to a look. And it's super casual, but elegant at the same time. There were some certain looks that were very reminiscent of La Mer that we've just touched on in the way that the colors were put across as well as the styling. And there was a lot of looks in this that made me think about living my Star Wars dream, you know, Jedi-esque fits, which is always fun to see and adds a more playful element to the brand. I think naturally because of the way that their pleats sit and the way that they flow and drape, it adds a lot of exploration to every outfit they put across. In terms of the accessories too, I was a big fan of the way that this sort of wraparound scarf was tucked into some of the looks. It did remind me of the Kiko knit from this season that had almost this little panel incorporated into the collar of this cardigan. So it's nice to see it from another designer or another brand in a new and more unique way. And even the tie and this look which I'll show was really, really sublime. I'd never really thought of a tie being incorporated into an Izzy Miyake Hon Plisse look. But it's another the brand where seeing another collection from them just really makes you want to have more product from the label and I'm really excited to potentially try and grab some more. And now moving on to the dystopian world of Rick Owens, it was really fun to see them do something 
a bit different for her SS25 collection, delve deeper into using the runway as a method of communicating a message. The collection also embodied that cult following that they have, incorporating 200 students into the runway and really giving an element of scale and size to it. And as I've mentioned from the Izzy looks being reminiscent of Star Wars, the Rick runway really made me think of the Stormtroopers marching in the Death Star. And it was all about, I guess, almost this Rick Owens army walking in unison. And Rick himself said this collection was all about bringing people together, bringing people together with Rick Owens to do something good and positive. And it was also Rick's first all white show. So almost flipping the script on what everybody would anticipate a Rick show to be dark and dystopian. He's now made it so bright and white, it's the complete opposite. I really wanted to draw attention to this show because it shows that fashion can be more than just clothes, that these amazing designers can really communicate a, a thought-provoking, exceptional showcase, which shows their creative direction overall. It's not just about the clothes, it's about everything around that and by using it as a perfect art form to create thought-provoking art on the runway and I guess utilising the runway to its full capabilities. Moving on to the next brand I want to chat about, it's Amiri. I think Amiri for a long time has got a lot of slack and picks up a lot of slack for just being that brand that makes the skinny jeans still and I think there's a lot of product they've been putting out and a lot of the collection recently that have actually been really really strong and showed that it's not just about that. It's always funny to see their collections and runways because that one product that they're known for never seems to be part of it. It's kept very separate on the wholesale level but there was clear evidence of that 70s theme being a big inspiration for them. They touched on press notes and press around the show that the 70s jazz era was a big theme and you can see that through the use of musical notes and different details of that level. I love the signature blue green tone that the brand always seems to incorporate into their collections and that was ever present throughout the runway too and the focus on tailoring was particularly interesting to me. I loved how wide some of the collars got. So again, championing that Hollywood 70s aesthetic. And I also liked the Amiri logo wallet slash chain detailing. I think it was a nice touch in terms of accessories and shows the detail that the brand can go into when wanting to communicate the message. But I definitely think it's one that we should all really give the credit where it's due to the work that's being done there. I really hope more stores buy into some of this product. I was chatting with some friends about Amiri and how you see these runways and then you never see this product again from them because on a wholesale level no one buys into it and I think if they could just drive sales of this runway collection a bit better then they might be able to change that brand perception. It wouldn't be a lowdown video without me touching on Kiko and his latest collection. Kiko is just a designer where I love all the pieces that he makes. It's really a brand which I think resonates with me a lot so naturally seeing the latest collections from him is always a joy. I think the show overall delved into a lot of militarian utilitarian references as the brand often has and i think there was a lot of reference into old kiko pieces too which is funny considering how when he first started out he said he never really wanted to create that level of detail within the brand he always wanted each collection to be its own unique showcase many of the pants silhouettes for me were very reminiscent of his fall winter 20 collection besides that we naturally saw a lot of progressive trims and embellishment and these were mixed with bright color pops and contrasting tones to create I think that signature Kiko look where it isn't necessarily the most beautiful colors used all the time but it certainly makes it stand out and seem very interesting. I feel like a lot of the work that Laura and Diana are doing with the women's wear collection seems to be channeling into the men's wear too. The belt chain wallet detailing is something they were really pushing in all their styling for previous collections of recent years and I think the sole of the recent Sonia shoe that they've released is now making its way onto the menswear collection with the boots that were shown within the looks. So I'm really excited to see those in person and potentially try and grab them. I think overall the collection maybe wasn't one of his strongest but I think it builds on that Kiko design language and maybe is showing the progression he needs to make in order to create a brand where people constantly look to buy from them. By having the referencing to old pieces and having more of a running theme it makes it easier to sell to the customer. Because fundamentally if a customer comes to your brand and can't see that running theme it's harder for them to buy into it 
again and again. Another great talking point for Fashion Week is the work that Jonathan Anderson is doing. Specifically now we'll talk about what he showed with Loewe this season for spring summer. I wasn't too big a fan of the fall winter collection he recently showed, but I think this SS25 collection shows the prowess and his capabilities. It's really groundbreaking and pushes the boundaries of menswear, which I always love to see somebody doing it a little bit differently. And his surrealist take on fashion is a sight for sore eyes in an industry where it is being more positioned, I guess, for like quiet luxury aesthetic. The runway started off quite tame, but quickly ramped up with the use of glitz and glamour that JW is never afraid to incorporate. There was a heavy theme of feathers and metallics, gold, silvers. And I almost found that the collection questioned men as a whole and raised a lot of questions around the concept of peacocking, that sense of one-uppery that it seems that a lot of guys have incorporated into their mindset. And I think the watch link chainmail he showed was poking fun at men wearing their status symbols and their symbols of wealth. So it plays on that mindset a little bit. I always find that JW does trousers and pants really, really well. I love within this collection, the use of the patch detail on the front to create that overlapping flowy nature. And that cinching at the Loewe patch just creates an interesting silhouette for sure. But I think it's another collection where JW has really delivered. And I think Jonathan, potentially, if he carries on this way, is gonna go down as one of the greats. He's doing amazing work and it just makes me want to see more and more product from him and naturally i think the way to end our discussion of fashion week is to look at how fashion week ended with sadly the last collection from Dries Van Noten. Everybody was out in full force at the show. You had the likes of Glenn Martins there. There was rumors that people saw Margiela there, but I don't know if I believe that because nobody seems to know what he looks like anymore. And he really bowed out with a captivating collection. He didn't hold back. The runway was littered with silver leaves in almost a confetti-like style. And when I was looking at the show, I did delve into the symbolism for confetti as a whole, and it's to signal good luck, prosperity, fertility, so maybe it's, this is something he's trying to wish for the brand without him at the top. And that silver leaf tied into one of his previous collections, which had gold leaves on the runway. So he's signaling him back to previous work he has done. And despite being his last show, Dree showed further experimentation and playing with flamboyancy within menswear, which I always love from him. And there was heavy nostalgia too. There was a lot of floral prints within the collection, which Dree's has grown to be known for. I also really loved this Japanese print technique which was over a thousand years old that he used in the collection don't worry i'm not going to say it out loud for fear of butchering the pronunciation but definitely the best thing of the show for me was the innovation that he was not afraid to show even though he is leaving whilst he is on his way out he's signaling what to expect from the brand and setting it up to really do well in the future of course and the design prowess and capabilities of Dries was still ever present and clear so whilst I'm sad to see him go, I'm really excited to see what can happen at Dries Van Noten as a brand without him at the top. So there we go, guys. Another all-encompassing rundown of everything you needed to know about Men's Fashion Week. I guess to summarize, I found it so much more interesting than Autumn Winter 24. I found that Autumn Winter 24 was quite reserved and a lot of brands were playing it safe. And I feared that because of the economic climate and how luxury is really performing at the minute, we'd see the same for SS24 but it seems like everybody's decided, you know what, we're gonna go all out and do what we know we can do well. And that's great to see. You've got every brand with a unique design language playing into that. And a lot of brands trying to do something new, interesting and experimental which is what fashion is all about, being forward thinking and trying out new things. So that's everything from me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and I can't wait to see you in the next one.